All right, David Harry here, and this is going to be one of a few shortish videos, hopefully, where I'm going to be talking about very particular aspects of the up and coming Apple iPad Pro M1. So, for the first one, I'm going to just throw it out to my friend Threlly here. We're going to have a little bit of a banter about it. Say hello, Threlly. Hi, Threlly. There we go. So, Threlly iPad Pro so far with HDMI interface and on I've never been able to do 16.9 on the outputs is it about time Apple sorted that out oh for god's sake yeah I think you know we've discussed this in the past with things like the Apple TV and Google devices that have a sort of mixed bag approach to how they output but um, seeing as, the, as you've mentioned to me the, the ratio of the screens has now changed yeah. between the same line of devices. Yeah. They've got a new version of Apple TV OS that, that covers all 16-9 screens and doesn't have a problem with its applications. Yeah. I don't really see why. I understand that whole Apple ethos of um, their devices remaining in their own lanes, as yeah. it were, for the way they're used, but I think that's changed now. Yeah. Well, you would think so, wouldn't you? Or, or, or at least you would hope so. You would hope that Apple would start getting on board and actually doing what people want. And the point that I'm kind of raising here is now that we're going to be using like the singular most powerfulest ever, like portable device, and I'll put it down to portable device as in, you know, phone, tablet, pad and all that. This M1 powered iPad Pro is basically a laptop without a keyboard isn't it yeah now um, they, when they did the original ipad pro that was essentially a desktop class cpu yeah yeah roughly equivalent to an i5 at the time and that was that was the mark one yeah and yeah. now we've got a device that can outdo you know 10 series intel processors in certain ways that only consumes 18 watts all yep. the lines are completely blurred now yeah and the, even apple are having a problem now because there are there are apps that are in the app store that are labelled as Mac OS apps that are just as capable of being an iPad app. Yeah. With very little difference. Absolutely. So they've even if you search for an app in the App Store now, there's two categories. There's desktop and there's iPad. Yeah. In the same place. Yeah. So even their even their lines as far as software development and design of these apps are blurring now. Yeah. Um, so the bottom line then and it, it's just being reinforced more because it's going to go to m1 now yeah we should be getting full 16.9 rescaling on the output of the ipad pros via hdmi through thunderbolt or through usb-c on the previous ipads yes or no yeah, yeah. should i mean the, the line's even going to become a bit worse when they release the iphone 13. yeah is that going to have either an m1 or a derivative of the m1 in it and then what are they going to do is that going to have thunderbolt on it too are they going to maintain the aspect ratio of apps on the iphone compared to apps for the ipad yeah and again for the desktop i mean to be honest Trell, though you are raising some good points there which i think we might need to discuss in other videos because mm. you and i have both said before this point that from here on in any of the like pro type devices or high-end portable devices by apple will all end up having some derivative of m1 in just purely because they are now at the point where they can mass produce this one item and then they can strip it back a bit they can underclock it they can drop a core out here and there to differentiate you know the use for different vi the devices and whatnot and try not to like under or overcut other ranges yeah however we're, we're there now yeah. we're, we're in this thing where m1 is the launch pad for all these things moving forward i think yeah apple have reached the singularity now i mean they had different you know uh, types of cpu for different devices across their product range but now it appears to be they're unifying every single cpu yeah and every single device all to the same so those guidelines they've got for app creation and the way we view them have to be re-looked at have to be yeah 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 and I, I don't think they're there yet no okay so bottom line is then does anybody else out there have an issue with like the way apple to date have not given us 16.9 outputs when we're using hdmi off any apple device actually any apple portable device which is capable of sending hdmi out either through uh, let's see usb-c now to be thunderbolt as well 
and also what's the original socket on lightning. there? Lightning. Lightning, yeah. So yeah, let us know if anybody out there agrees with this statement. And my prediction is that immediately it probably won't. And I think for some time it probably won't. I don't think Apple are gonna give us what we want. I want I want to be I want to be shocked. And, 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 it, and it does it day one. But they will shock you with the price. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I already had to go and visit the toilet after I bought it. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, that'll do for this video. Let us know in the comments your thoughts about this. And also I'll be covering some other stuff and I'll get fairly on with some of these other things to do with all this Apple thing as well. Anywho, I'm David Harry. Thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now. Bye.